All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Something a little different this morning. I'm gonna take a bit of a break from the big projects. Uh, I need to move the RV. Normally I would have a pickup truck to do that. However, I put a nice little scratch on the tailgate and it's getting painted. That's a whole different story. Um, I'm going to take the backhoe off the Kubota. I have a hitch adapter that kind of goes on the three point hitch. Uh, we'll get that installed. We'll see how annoying it is to remove the trailer hitch adapter that I have added to the backhoe. And we'll see how easy it is to disconnect the hydraulics, but still maintain the functionality of the rear remotes that I installed on the BX. And I'll link to all those videos too. So it's gonna be fun. Oh, I'm in the shade. Oh, we can't have that. There we go. It's gonna be fun. Stick around, let's do it. So the first thing I have to do is get that trailer hitch out from underneath that backhoe. Uh, I did a video early on uh, showing how I was able to use a, a hole in the bed plate of the, uh, of the backhoe to kind of support the tongue weight of that extended drawbar. It's worked pretty good so far. Uh, you do get a little light on the front wheels depending on what you're towing, but you can always throw some cinder blocks in the bucket and get by. So I'll uh, try to figure out what size wrench that is and I will remove that piece of threaded rod. We'll get that draw bar out of there. Three quarter inch socket ratchet and wrench. Still have a piece of threaded rod in here that's half inch diameter. I'm going to step it up to five eighths eventually, but I went to the store to get some uh, some nylock nuts after they lifted the provincial lockdown here in Ontario, Canada, and the shelves were decimated. I wasn't able to find anything the right size, so the half inch will have to do for now. And I've yet to uh, get a sleeve made to try to stabilize this arrangement a little better. Seems to be working okay for now, but a sleeve would be better. You can, uh, I'll link to the video of the trailer hitch here, and uh, you can see what I mean by that. So there's my 18 inch extended draw bar. I drilled that 5 8 hole right there for the threaded rod to pick up on that hole that came on the backhoe from the factory. Put that back together a little bit so I don't lose it. Okay, let's ditch this, uh, let's ditch this backhoe. There's probably lots of videos on YouTube of how to remove one of these, but, but I haven't done one yet. So let's get it off.
So the first thing you have to do when you want to take this backhoe off is uh, dip your boom down here so the bucket can contact the ground. Put a little bit of pressure on the ground and that will remove the pressure on these pins in here. There's two pins in here. I'll show you the pins after the backhoe's out. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, once the pressure's off the pins, you just slide them out. I'll just drive the tractor ahead a little bit and we'll shut it off and disconnect the hydraulics. So there you go. You can see where those uh, large pins go through here on the backhoe and they engage the tractor right there. Also on the bottom you can see see these round pins. I'll go to the other side of the tractor the lighting might be a little better for you guys. How's that? See that round pin right there? There's one here and there's also one here. They sit down in these grooves on the tractor. So you're setting those pins down in these grooves and then you're tipping the tractor, or I'm sorry, you're tipping the backhoe up towards the back of the tractor until these holes line up with those holes and you slide the pin through. It takes a bit of getting used to. I don't do it very often, which is why, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a, of a learning curve every time I do it to remember which movements are going to give you the, the result that you uh, desire. But uh, at this point, all you have to do is disconnect your hydraulics and this isn't how yours will probably be set up because I did add rear remotes to this. I built that block uh, with parts from Princess Auto and I can link to that video as well. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do is just take the backhoe out of the Power Beyond circuit and we'll just leave that hooked up. So I'll get the camera mounted and we'll do that. Okay. What do we got here? Disconnect that guy. I'm pretty sure this one is a return to tank for the backhoe. Again, it's been a while. This is your pressure line, I think. I can't remember. Maybe I should just disconnect stuff and not talk. Um, that's your pressure in to my valve block. So all I have to do, in, instead of uh, this being the pressure line that would go to the backhoe, and then this being the, the pressure out of the power beyond on the backhoe and going into my block. Now I just have pressure coming out of the tractor directly to the block. Done. Everything else on the backhoe stays disconnected. Okay. I mean, they make these kinds of things for some of the models of, of BX for rear remotes, but uh, when you have the backhoe, there's no option from Kubota to just simply have something like this and install it. So I just built it and I just tied it into the, uh, into the hydraulic circuit and I can link to that video too.
All right, so we're done with that. You can drive away. If I was leaving this for a long time, I would block this up somehow so that it wouldn't move around. I don't have one of those fancy carts in a great big shop with a cement floor to roll it around yet. But uh, we're getting there. I gotta go grab my uh, three-point hitch and I'll be right back. And, uh, I, I don't know if this is the same for, for the newer versions of this tractor, like the BX23S or any of the other BX, but uh, this is a BX25D and this is how it's designed. You've got this, uh, this shaft that goes through here that needs to be in these holes and it has these collars that have to be put on each side of the shaft first. A little bit annoying. Once it's in there, you have to slide the collars left and right so that they take up the whole hole. And there's a flat spot at the top that needs to be at the top because it fits perfectly in the frame on the tractor that way. One there. And one there. Once that's done, you can slide these arms to the sides. And then this guy here, there's a small pin with a small clip in there. Remove the clip, don't lose it. Remove the little pin, don't lose it. This guy here slides right over that bar you just installed. Once it's on there, put the pin back on from the top and then contort yourself around and put that pin back in. All right, that's back in. Now we just have to hook these guys up. Pretty self-explanatory. Pin with clip up to here and here. Whoops, that was handy. Same thing on this side. This is where I have to be careful because with these modifications that I've made with these hydraulic hoses, I need to watch that nothing gets caught on my three-point hitch. I use it very infrequently, but uh, I mean, that could change. Maybe a bungee cord or something wouldn't hurt. All right, so the three-point hitch is installed. I'm gonna grab the, uh, the top link, which goes here and also my uh, my towing bracket. This thing works pretty good. If you're towing something and you know, you know you have a ton of tongue weight and it's never gonna lift, this is the bracket to use. It keeps the load close to the back of the tractor and uh, the three-point hitch has tons of power to lift it. But if there's a chance that your tongue is gonna wanna lift, this is not the tool for the job at all. You need uh, something like what I've designed to go on when the back hose is installed. turns on that to straighten it up. That's not it. I got to put the pins in here still. How many of you noticed that? We'll put the pins in there and then we'll tighten up on these turnbuckles to eliminate that sway.
There you go, guys. <clears throat> guys and girls. That's all there is to it. Let's go see if this tractor will lift up the front of that camper. Uh, what's the camper? It is a Forest River Surveyor 243 RBS. Um, I think the whole trailer weighs in around five or 5,500 pounds, but I'm not sure. I have to move a vehicle and uh, grab myself a draw bar here with a two and five sixteenths ball, and uh, we'll see what happens. That's the actual draw bar from the truck. I don't need that little eight inch extension, but the reason we use that with the truck is to stop the tailgate from opening onto the jack on the front of the camper, or sorry, onto the jack on the front of my small aluminum trailer, which is how the tailgate got scratched, which is why the truck is in the shop getting a tailgate painted. I don't know why they designed those trailers with the jack so close to where the ball attaches to the, to the hitch. It just doesn't make sense. That should be set way back. My fault. Well, I guess that proves it. It'll move it. I don't know if it proves anything. Maybe it proves nothing. Probably proves that it has a really powerful three-point hitch that you should not use for this. Anyways, quick and dirty little video for you there. If you're interested, you can follow the links to those other other things I did with the BX for the, uh, for the hydraulics and for the towing and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.